This is Mastering Mathematics with your teacher, Karen Weston. Hi, I hope you had a good evening and that your rest was peaceful. I know it wasn't so for some of the families in Antigua Barbuda, and we must not forget all those who have lost somebody. Good evening. Welcome once again to Mastering Mathematics. My name is Karen Weston and this is a, post, a program sponsored by the Ministry of Education using its EPU unit and the research centre here for mathematics and ABS television. Of course you know that we are on YouTube and you can get us just typing in Mastering Mathematics or again we can go to our website www.masteringmathematics.info and we'll get our information. Email us again to at ebu mastering mathematics at gmail.com. Okay, and that ebu mastering math without an S on it, all right? And of course, my number is 7836971. We have resources, you can be doing mathematics now, you're not in isolation. The only thing I ask the public to observe is that from between 8 and 11, 8 to 3, I reserve those times for teachers and students so that they can get a flow and they can easily call me at any time. Need to see me before that, please make an appointment and I will be there with you. All right, now, what were we doing? Yes, our topic is fractions. All right, we have gone through the first part of it. We know the concept, we know the names. Two names are in our brains, our numerator and our denominator. We can say the denominator says how many parts we're dividing our stuff into. Numerator says how many parts we're using. Then we went and now we're talking about the different types of fractions. And we spoke yesterday about a vulgar fraction. And we said another name for that vulgar fraction was the, was the proper fraction. Because we told you that a vulgar fraction was a fraction in which the numerator was smaller than the denominator. Then we jumped up because we also know that a vulgar fraction can be called a proper fraction. And we saw the word improper. And this was a teacher you guided using influence here that we linked these two together. Okay, because that can also be called a proper fraction. And that is what we call teacher guiding the lesson. So we went right away for the word improper, because I know you have been doing those words, and we know right away the im there would tell us, okay, it's the opposite here, and this time for an improper, so let's put the word proper here, fraction, and for an improper fraction, We are saying the numerator is larger than the denominator. And again, our top number is called our numerator, and our bottom number is called our denominator. So we have those concepts. We are knowing the names of our fraction, and they would be knowing names of fraction would be actually like saying you're identifying each family member. Then we wanted now to tell you about mixed fraction. What does that mean? We use that word mix and you know right away, yes, because what do you buy in this store or anywhere that has that word mix on it? Do we know anything about that, Aisha? We're buying something in the store and we have anything called mix. What do we call a mix? What about my cameraman? Would my cameraman tell me? Do we have anything that we call a mix where we're talking about them? So we can start telling our students anything about it. Ah, these people, they don't shop around. They don't like snacking, or else they would know right away. What do, yes, yes, I see Aisha here mouthing that for me. We talk about mix nuts, right? Yes, we go into the stores and we pick up those things, okay? And if you're not saying, oh, well, cash, you know, I want everything. I want raisins in it too. So we buy mix nuts. That is right, okay? So what do you think that we mean when we start talking about mixed fraction? And because we're dealing with numbers, it means right away, yes, it's like every time we're mixing up something, we're putting more than one type of something into the same component, all right? 
So a mixed fraction then, I can show you if I gave you 2 and 3 upon 4, that would be called a mixed fraction. Okay, so what can we say a mixed fraction is? A mixed fraction is made up of a whole number and a fraction. Okay, whole number plus fraction. Okay, fraction. And our exercise there is just to get our students acquainted with these things. So you ask them to do several examples and bring them up to you. Let them come up one, and they're coming up and seeing who first can come up and whoever got how many right and so forth. See their little feet running, running, coming to you to check and see, putting up their little hands to come and see their little um, things to see that these things are correct. So don't rush into anything. Make certain every part of the journey you're satisfied that they have absorbed that little part and yes, we can go to the next level. All right? So, some of the other examples we could have been getting here would have been seven and a third. Okay. What else can we talk about? Yes, we can say five and two sevenths. All right. And what else can we talk about? One and a quarter. All right. So, we have a whole number plus a fraction. Okay. And that is what we call mixed fractions. Now, what about equivalent fractions? What are we talking about when we start talking about equivalent fractions? What do we mean? And again, and that is why I'm saying to teachers, the English language is very much a part of the mathematics classroom because we have equi right away. We can see that first part of a word, the stem, and we know right away that it has to do something with equal. Isn't that true? Yes. Okay. So we start introducing the students again to language. And they're using the vocabularies. So that they're not just saying, I know what it is. No, but I can't explain. Yes, they must be able to explain all they don't know what it is. And we want them to know what it is. All right. Because that is the way the world is going in terms of our knowledge economy. We cannot take any step backwards where we are going to be saying, let us make our program less. The mathematics program is directly related to the expansion of the economy and therefore to the amount of mathematics that must be used in any economy. And that is why we get this expansion where people may have said, oh, when we went to school, we just did maths, geometry and algebra. Those days are over. Those days are over. We are now in our knowledge economy and we're talking about service, banking, insurance, and it's not just a monocultural economy anymore, all right? And people are not just waiting for weight and everything and size and who can lift something. We are calling now upon our students to use their intellect, to apply wisdom, and to analyze whatever problem they have. And that is why we have to take the time out to make certain that they do understand the concept that we are talking. Because it's not the algorithm anymore that's going to confuse them or they're asked to use in the workplace. What they want to know is to know that they know concept and then they can apply what they're going to be calling these IT products to whatever job they have to use. So we have to take our time, make certain they understand those concepts. And the concept here that we're saying so we have told him about mixed number, whole numbers, and it has a fraction. We're now calling for equivalent fraction. Equivalent fraction. And if I gave you a half, and I said that was the same thing as 5 over 10, and it would be the same thing as 4 upon 8. All right. So what are we actually saying? We're saying equivalent fractions. They have the same value. They have the same value. Okay. They can be expressed and written differently. But then they have the same value. Denominator says that we are taking 
how many we have divided our total into and the numerator says how many parts we are taking and when you give them these fractions and you're telling them that they are equivalent let them do it practically and they can see why you're saying that they have the same value why you're saying that we're calling these fractions equivalent okay because in any case you would always be seeing what is the relationship between 5 and 10 and yes 5 is a half of 10 okay and that is where we're talking about and here again what is the relationship between 4 and 8 and once again we are saying 4 is a half of 8 so that is what we're talking about teachers make the thing relevant make them understand what we actually mean when we put these terms for them on the blackboard just now again I want you to absorb all that has been said I know it so it may sound as if it's easy but I'm going to give you a chance to absorb everything I've said so far in terms of the mixed fraction and the equivalent fraction do go and take a break and I'll be right back to take you through the rest of the evening Be sure that you're working in the same units of measure when performing calculations. If a problem involves inches, feet, and yards, be sure to make the appropriate conversions so that all your values are in the same unit of measure. For example, change all values to feet. When asked to show work or justify your answer, don't be lazy. Write down everything about the problem, including the work you did on your calculator. Include diagrams, calculations, equations, and explanations written in complete sentences. Now is the time to show off what you really can do with this problem. I may not hear, but that does not and should not affect my ability to learn and to function in the real world. I am a gifted student. I need the opportunity to soar. Support me in my climb to a higher levels of learning. Some of our children have special educational needs. They have a right to an education. So, let us teach them the way that they learn and help them to achieve their full potential. So you had your break, all right, and we had everything. We said our little prayer and we remember Sean. Oh my Jesus, please pray for his family and make certain that this shock will be a thing of the past very soon and your loved one will be with you. And the nation of Antigua Barbudo, we will go on. Okay, um, what we were doing, we brought you up, we told you about the types of fractions. So. The evening before we had vulgar fraction, we know what that is. Numerator is smaller than the denominator. Improper fraction, where the numerator is larger than the denominator. Mixed fraction, we have a whole number and a fraction. And we talk about equivalent fraction, that they have the same value. Okay? I said I'm going to leave decimal fractions for an entire lesson on its own because it has to do and it is tied to our place values. But the only thing we want to say 
those fractions which have 10 and powers of 10 as denominators are called decimal fractions. But we're going to leave it to link it together for you with our place values. But just be aware that there are fractions that we call decimal fractions. Okay? Yes. So fifth, oh, even now fifth formers, now you're starting from the beginning because you're saying, when I went to primary school, my teacher taught me those things, but I didn't understand. So we are making certain that you understand and your little sister or your little brother or your cousin that they are right alongside you and you can tell them. And the grannies and aunties and those who are retired who have so much time now to waste. Yes, it is so rewarding when you can help a little child and take that frustration off of his or her face. Right, so what did we say we do with these things? Fractions. Why are we killing you? Why are we teaching you this topic at all? What is it going to do to your little world? Why do you have to know it? Can I ask you to write some of those answers and to tell me? Okay, but I will tell you every time when mommy bakes a cake and she divides it into equal pieces, that is where fraction comes into play. When you're doing your baking, for those of you in management and in home economics, when you tell me that you have to do um, how many pounds of flour and how many butter you have to put to that, okay? That ratio and proportion part of it is then expressed as a fraction. So again, in different aspects, and I'm going to try and ask you to tell me where in that world and in your little space you would be dealing with fractions. And you're going to see how every day we actually use this whole concept of fractions without even realizing it. Every time you go and you say you get your salary, you're going to pay the bill $200 for this, that for that, this for that, it's a fraction. Okay, it's $200 out of $1,000. It's this out of a $20. Even every time you go to the shop, all right? The change you're getting back, okay? Because you would have spent a fraction of the total that you took to the shop. So, all this works for good for us. Now, the first thing I want you to know about then is that I'm not going to ask you to express fraction in its lowest terms because we can start from there where we just have people doing fractions because we told them a while ago we're starting with our equivalent fractions so even before we start giving you the rules so that you're adding or subtracting or multiplying them you will be home say what did miss weston say again a half is the same thing as five over ten and as four over eight where Miss Weston come in with those things from? And again, we're telling you five is a half of ten and four is a half of eight. So, because we know we're going to ask you to add, subtract, multiply, and divide our fractions, we are going to start first asking you if there is any way, and we call it, what do we call it? We call them reducing fractions okay we call them reducing fractions so if i gave you eight over ten can i make that smaller where it has the same value what can i do to reduce that fraction to make it an to give it its equivalent partner. Can we do something like that? And I will say to you that generally when you're asked to reduce fractions, okay, reduce fractions, and sometimes we ask to express the answer in its lowest term, all right? And that is where this comes. And you see right away, it's at the very beginning of the topic, fractions. So we're jumping up now and we are reducing fractions. Now, just because we're dealing with small children, we're not going to make the numbers very, very large, all right? We want them to get the concept that we are teaching. 
how can we reduce that this this fraction and again I say we are examining numbers to see what they are I I have called the numbers you have 8 over 10 what do we know about 8 and 10 right yes you are listening they are even numbers and what do we know about even numbers as long as a number is an even number it can be divided by two okay so two is a factor of that number whatever we do to the numerator we must do to the denominator so to reduce fraction means that we can either multi we must if we are reducing it we are dividing right so listen to that word here the vocab that's going with it so when in our mathematics classroom we see reduce we know because we say that word all the time don't we we're saying somebody's reducing she's not so fat anymore right so that is what we're saying all right so you say, wow, you're looking like a young chick, man. What are you doing? And you're saying, I'm eating vegetables, fruits, keeping off of the flour. And that is what we are doing now, okay? So it's the same things we do with the numbers. Okay, why are we not taking these things into the mathematics classroom? You say somebody look chubby, chubby, and you say, uh, -uh you're reducing, man. What are you doing? All right. And you're right. So we're going to reduce it. And what is the operation? When we are reducing, we are dividing. And that's what you do. You used to eat a whole big plate of food. What are you doing now? You reduce the amount you're taking in. And so you're eating a smaller portion. Okay? So we're reducing it. So what are we going to be doing? We're dividing our numerator by 2. And our denominator also must be divided by 2. All right. Do we know a number in our two times table that would have given us eight? And you have been using that table. It's a tool. What do you say two times what would have given you eight? And you see right away, or if you know you like to cab your little fingers or you put down your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, how many groups of twos we can get. And you see right away it is four. Right. So you'll be going four. And it's over. And again, you have your 10. Do we know tables? Or are you the one who do things practically? Let's go. And it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. How many groups of twos we can get out of that? And you're counting, and you see you have five. Okay? And then so once again, we can get that. So we can. Is there anything else that we could divide both of those numbers by to reduce them to a smaller fraction? I would say no, because there's no common factor. And then so that is the answer. 8 divided by 2, ten, oh, and 10 divided by 2. So we know in reducing 8 over 10, the answer then would have been equal to 4 over 5. Now I'm going to leave you tonight, and I'm just going to ask you to try these two. And we'll start from here the next time, because now we're going to get on to the operations in terms of our fraction. What about if I gave you 9 upon 12, or if I left you here again with no big numbers, 1, 2, 3, and if I gave you 4 over, let's call it 16. Can we reduce those fractions? You're going to tell me the next time if this was something that you could have done easily. Okay, the first one has been done for you, and you have these two to take with you and to see if you can work them. And in the meantime, you will construct five for yourself and to see if you got them out. So you don't have to be waiting on me to work along with them because now we are in the constructionist classroom and we are giving ourselves the practice. We are our own teachers and we learn a lot when we teach ourselves. Okay, so I will guide you and then you will take it from there and sooner or later, we are all going to be independent learners. Yes, we are going to master this mathematics. 
not as difficult as what people want us to believe. Give us the concept, make certain that things are communicated properly and that we understand. Have the children write in little journals so you can see at the end of the day what it is they understood because if they're writing something and you know that line is not true, you can call that little child and say, right, this is not what teacher meant when she said so and so. And you can explain it immediately. And do remember to visit their little home, see where they're coming from, see what the challenges are. Let us make certain that the friendly environment does not stop just within the classroom, but it extends within the society. Antigua Bar Building needs us now. We need the support. Things are too rampant. I ask you once again to pray for the nation of Antigua Bar Building. Pray for all those who have the education system at heart. Don't forget still to pray for our education minister, sports minister too, prime minister, and all those who have the governance of this country. And to Jetta and to Aisha, thank you for being here and for taking us along this journey because we're not going to stop until everybody in Antigua Barbuda can and do learn mathematics. Enjoy the rest of the evening and practice, practice, practice. So until next time, this is Karen Weston saying, have a good evening. Join us next time for another in the series, Mastering Mathematics, a production of the Education Broadcasting Unit in the Ministry of Education and ABS-TV.